Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is Utopia by Dreadbooks. Utopia is the fifth of the chromatic series by Dreadbooks that I'm reviewing. And just like the rest of the chromatic series, there is much more to this module than just meets the eye. And in all fairness, you might want to say that Utopia is a combination of a uh, quad attenuverter, an offset generator, a CV controllable LFO, a 4 to 3 mixer, a buffered malt, a pulserizer, and much, much more. And if you then think about all of the combinations that you can achieve by just patching this thing to itself, it does become a very compelling package altogether. Um, I do have to thank Dratbooks for making this episode possible, uh, but as this has become one of the longer videos in this series, I would just say, well, make sure you're sitting down because uh, here we go. So here we have Utopia. And again, like the rest of the Chromatic series, it's quite nice and bright. And this one is, I, I might want to describe this as a salmon pink on its way to become orange. <laughs> I know that that might be the, the worst kind of description for a color ever, but I'm doing my best, right? <laughs> so let me just dive right in and describe what we have here. So like the rest of the Chromatic series, this is of course a, a collection of modules into one. So it does bring a lot of bang for the buck. So the first functionality of this is that these are these are essentially four attenuators. So where you can go all the way to the positive and you can use just attenuate that as well. And then you can invert as well and then attenuate the negative side. Um, what it then also is, is if you do not connect anything into the third or fourth input, then the third behaves like an offset generator and the fourth, well, the output then becomes the LFO output. And the LFO itself is again controlled by the LFO well, rate knob right there, but you can also use CV to, uh, to influence that. More on the LFO later. All four of these outputs are then normal to the mixer. So you do have um, the, the normal well, outputs from these four that are patching into the, the mixer there, or you can use these inputs there as well. And these inputs are then again uh, multiplied to three outputs. So essentially this is a four to three mixer, uh, but you can also use that as a one to three buffered malt or, or a two to three buffered malt slash mixer, uh, whatever you need, of course. And this is then again normal to the input for the pulserizer, which has an output there. So essentially you have, you've got a collection of attenuverters, a mixer, a pulserizer, an LFO generator, and an offset generator. Uh, and that's and that's and that's it. Well, there is of course much more to it once you start connecting this to itself or connecting this to other modules. So what I want to do is I just want to quickly work with you and see what we can achieve with us just this module uh, but also by combining it with others so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to grab this one here and this is going there and we are going to be using the owner as an lfo for now so i'm just going to patch that to the well the sine wave, let's use that. So there you go. So now we've got the sine going there. And what we can then also do is we can grab that sine wave and patch that into the first input. And if we then grab the output from there, so let's just grab the output. There you go. We can now indeed just use this as an attenuverter. So first we can use it as an attenuator where we can go all the way up until we get the, uh, the same signal again. We can go down and just reduce the signal strength as you can see there. Let me just uh, zoom in a bit so we can actually see it a bit better. 
there you go that's quite nice and then we can go all the way up so we don't have anything we can go all the way to zero and then of course as said we can go to the inverse so we can invert this signal but also attenuate that so there you go so what would this then sound like so i've got another oscillator here um, that i'm just going to be patching into the eudaimonia right next to the uh, utopia and i'm then going to use the output from the utopia as a means of a cutoff for the low pass frequency filter and what we then grab is another cable with the outputs into my mixer there you go so right now we're, we have the inverse let's just uh, reduce that a bit so right now we don't have any fluctuation almost no fluctuation on the cutoff frequency for the filter and we can just increase that again so that's already a great thing right so what we can what we then also can do is i'm just gonna get this same cable and push that into one of the mix outputs so right now it's gonna mix everything that we have here so right now I've, i ha don't have anything connected into the second the third or the fourth output so what we can now do is we can add a bit of offset to this and let's just reduce the and we can actually add some LFO to it. Let me just maybe zoom out there a bit so we can actually see when we start to clip. So again, we have the offset. Sorry, wrong knob. And there you can see us actually clipping there all the way at the top but also if we go down clipping there as well so that's the offset generator and then of course we also have the LFO let's uh, increase the LFO rate a bit and even though we have it almost at the top there you go so right now the LFO is not doing anything uh, to this signal, but we can then of course increase its, its effect. Let's reduce the rate a bit. offset to it maybe reduce it a bit and then of course we can also add something else to the uh, to the second input so maybe what we want to do is we might want to grab an LFO from a taxia let's throw that in there something like that put it into LFO mode So this is of course only showing what you can do from a CV mixing perspective 
and a CV manipulation point of view as well. But we can actually do the exact same thing with audio. Um, I'm going to be doing that a bit later on. Uh, for now, I just want to keep focusing on uh, on CV. So even though I love this, let's just turn this, that off and turn this to zero as well. I need to find the actual middle there. There you go. Good enough. And then of course we need to make sure that this is also there. There we go. The second thing that we can use is of course indeed the pulserizer. So I'm just going to connect this to the pulserizer and there you already see what's happening here. So it's just going to take that, well in this case a sine wave, but the same thing applies to any other uh, sort of uh, well, wave shape you might have. And it is turning that into a pulse wave. So if we then turn this, we can actually, well, change the levels and actually change this, change its um, its pulse width. So let's just uh, look at what we can do with that. You can actually see when it triggers the um, the pulse generation. I'm just turning it up a bit. Let's increase the uh, the rate a bit. That's of course something that's really nice. Um, so what I want to do is I just want to quickly change this around and start to show you what we can do from an audio manipulation point of view. So let's disconnect this for now. There we go. And grab all of these there too. This is always my favorite part of these videos when I can actually just <laughs> yank all these things from the case. So what we still have is we've got the signal coming from the owner and we still have the audio coming out of the Utopia. So what we'll do is I'm just going to switch this to a, a VCO rate. There you go. And let's make sure that we have everything we need. Absolutely perfect. Let's zoom in a bit. So again, that's the sine wave we're working with. And that sine wave actually sounds like this. Here we go. So I'm just going to patch that into Utopia. And then, of, of course, we're just going to use it like that. Apologies. Grab. Um, hold on. This is what we should do. This is what's happening when you just throw around all these things that I need to remember. So I'm just going to patch this into that. And now we've got the exact same well signal that we are listening to. And we can then of course do the same thing. We can attenuate this. Let me just zoom in a bit. We can inverse it. Might just want to change this to a lower frequency so we can see it a bit better. And then, of course, we can mix in all kinds of things. So I'll just put it there. We can add the offset to it. And once you start to see clipping, 
that's of course really interesting as well. And we can add the LFO as well. Of course, when we do add the LFO into well, non-audio rates, this is what we get, what we end up seeing. But if we do get into audio ranges, again, quite fun, right? And what we can then also do is we can also uh, just introduce another, another VCO. I'm just gonna add this one here. Let me just uh, turn that down a bit. And that's just something you can do. No worries there whatsoever. So then the next thing becomes, well, the actual pulserizer. So I'm just gonna do it like that. And just like we saw with the CV, you can just use the offset here to do pulse width modulation. Before we actually dive into the actual patching and how to use this in a, in a musical patch, uh, one thing I want to focus on a bit is the actual LFO there. So I'm just going to disconnect this again and I'm just going to grab the output from the LFO and I'm just going to zoom out in time. So I'm just going to disconnect this one because we won't be needing that. And what we now have is the actual LFO that we get here so it is a triangle LFO and you can go all the way down to fairly long ranges let me just uh, zoom out a bit and it can go all the way up into fairly high um, well, audio rates as well so the thing we're now listening to is just the LFO so no other oscillator there whatsoever um, what you can then of course do is you can grab another well let's say an LFO in this case that's gonna get the actual CV And before you ask, uh, this is not uh, calibrated uh, for one volt per octave, so you can't use it as a VCO, unfortunately. Um, but it is something that I've tried, and to, um, well, of course, the proof in the pudding is in the eating. So let me just connect this to Hermit and just uh, use the well, same thing that I'm always using. As you can hear, that's not really musical, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab some of the modules and I'm just gonna create a musical patch and see what we can do with uh, Utopia. Just give me a second, right? So I'm just gonna patch the, well, that melody. I'm just grabbing that and putting that into the Ona 
which I'm going to be using as a VCO from now on. And I'm going to be patching that into, um, into that. I'm going to use the output from there. So all the way down, grab the sine wave from there, turn it into the, let's grab, put, push that into the pulsarizer. That's nice, right? So what I'm then doing is I'm just gonna patch the output from the pulsarizer into channel one, like that and then grab the output from the mixer. There you go. That's great, right? So let's, instead of doing that, let's just throw this into a VCA, into the Eudaimonia, and I'm just gonna grab the gate from Hermit and use that as a trigger for Taxia. So now we've got a Taxia creating nice and lush envelopes. So I'm just gonna push that into the VCA out. So we would now be seeing, there you go. And we're gonna patch the output from there into the first channel. Here. doing is add a bit of a, well, a bit of percussion to this and I might turn this down a bit I just love pulse width modulation it adds so much depth and character to your sounds right so that's something I really like So make sure that we get a, uh, a decent kick here too.
getting something out of this, right? Let me just try something else completely. And let's just do it like this. Then what we also want to do is I want to grab this output and patch that into the mixer there. And grab another cable and grab the output from this one and patch it into the Euphoria inputs. There we go. And I'm going to use the LFO outputs to actually change the rate of the LFO on the Euphoria. So what do you think of Utopia as one of those staple well, utility modules in your rack? Personally, I, I really love it and it just fits so well with the rest of the Chromatic series uh, but also with any other module that you might have. Um, so again, you can't go wrong at this price point. Um, of course, yeah, you do need to like the aesthetic. Personally, I love it. Uh, but I also understand why certain people might not like it. Uh, but again, there's no accounting for taste, right? Um, that being said, I hope you enjoyed this. Let's go back to the studio and wrap this up. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, wow. You're still there. Oh, wow. Great. Well, I do apologize for taking at least 30 minutes of your time while actually d deep diving into Utopia by Dreadbooks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and... Let me know what your feedback is, because as I've said before, and I do want to reiterate today as well, um, I do make these videos for you, the audience, and I do have to thank you for your continued commitment to this channel. So I do have to thank everyone who's just watched one of my videos or who, who have actually taken the time to subscribe, uh, especially the people that uh, have gone as far as becoming a patron of this channel as well, or the people that have clicked any of the affiliate links. I do have to say, well, without your support, um, I wouldn't have been able to do this or achieve what I've been achieving over the course of the last nine months. So again, thanks so much. Um, in addition to that, I do have to thank Dreadbooks for making this episode possible. And for now, I would just say, well, um, I've taken so much of your time. Hope everyone is staying safe and staying healthy. And for now, I would say, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.